Welcome to Cerner's live experience at HIMSS 2019 in Orlando, Florida. We are streaming live from the Cerner Recording Studio on the HIMSS exhibit floor, where we're sharing unique and insightful perspectives from some of the brightest minds in healthcare. At Cerner, we are intent on becoming the partner of choice for innovation in healthcare, but innovation only happens through collaboration. We are at a place of immense opportunity and possibility in this industry, but our next chapter can only be as powerful as the collaborative relationships that we cultivate. Today, we're discussing the importance of connectivity through mobility and communications in a healthcare setting. We're joined in the studio by John Gresham, Senior Vice President of Device Works and Interoperability at Cerner, and our guest, Chris Sullivan, Global Healthcare Practice Lead at Zebra Technologies. John and Chris, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Chris. Um, excited to be sitting down with you today to discuss uh, healthcare connectivity and clinical communications. Thanks for being here. Real happy to be here, John. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, so Chris, we've we've worked together a long time, our, our two companies, and thought it would be good to kind of hear how you're all, how you all are thinking about clinical communications and collaboration. And there seems to be that term seems to be replacing what was traditionally thought of as care team communications in kind of the C-suite vocabulary. And as you look around the floor and look around the show here, you're seeing a ton of folks kind of touting that capability, but how is Zebra defining that space today? Yeah, we're definitely seeing an evolution there, and I think that's a good thing. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's a hot spot in uh, many conversations with healthcare providers, and I think uh, communication is straightforward. It's about care team members speaking with each other. Collaboration is about them working in a more broad sense is how we think about it. And it's pulling in other sources of information besides just communication, such as data, such as co contextual information and real-time information. And so the term we're really starting to move towards and have for a while is referring to uh, mobility, clinical mobility and moving data and information intelligence to the edge or to the point of care. And so we see this evolution happening where the same device, uh, smartphone type device, is now more diversely being used, more broadly being used, uh, and it's bringing point of care healthcare information. And so we, uh, we're using the word clinical mobility mm -hmm. as one way to describe that. And okay. uh, I think we'll adjust as things move. Yeah, so you mentioned a couple of trends there. Uh, what are some other trends you're looking, looking, looking at in the industry? What are things you're seeing here, here at the show, as well as uh, broader based trends you mm -hmm. are monitoring? And one trend is that the people that are using mobile devices in healthcare is expanding pretty fast. Uh, the genesis of these devices was historically physicians and nurses, and we're now seeing a broad care team collaboration. So we're seeing a trend in more caregivers, more worker, workers using devices and being integrated together. Uh, roles in the healthcare organization such as patient transport, environmental services, physical therapy, food services, and, and so on. But we're also seeing a trend of intensity of use. Mm -hmm. There's more things that are flowing through these devices uh, and the users are doing more stuff with them, which is, which is awesome, it's, it's great. great to see. So both, both those trends, more people and more intensity. Okay, so does that change how you and Zebra think about the type of technology, the type of smartphone technology uh, you need to use or have uh, available for that, uh, given a, di a more diverse user set? How are you all thinking about that? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's a real-time uh, thing that we're putting a lot of thought into. Mm -hmm. So our objective is to be able to provide a single enterprise-wide communication information sharing platform mobily. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, get lots of feedback on different preferences for types of products, types of technologies. So we're looking both at integrated software capabilities that can work well with the existing information systems, but we're also exploring different types of form factor types to address different employee types, i.e. Uh, not all caregivers and care delivery personnel want the same things. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, lower tier devices that have some functionality, but not all of the functionality. We have things that do just voice communication, 
uh, and, and that's that's how we're looking at it, is trying to be flexible to the organization's needs. So, so one of the terms in the industry is BCMA or Barcode Meds Administration. So some users w may have that. Phlebotomists may have a use for barcode meds and, and phlebotomy workflows, but other users like EBS and transport, they may not need the same device needs. Um, as well as how does that extend to the broader care team in the home and so forth. And so you're thinking about all of those pieces? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And you look at the example of uh, barcoding and data capture. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned medication administration, breast milk administration. You look at things such as capturing a medical device for UDI. Mm -hmm. uh, certain caregivers are doing those things often every day. Other roles, not so much. Uh, and so the concept of having a, a barcode capture functionality in a device may not be necessary for other employee types. Okay. So, so one of the other uh, industry hot topics is kind of the topic of alarm fatigue. How are you all thinking about alarm fatigue, assisting in that, uh, while still ensuring that the right clinical information is getting to the caregiver? Because it's so important, but how, do, how are you... How, how is Zebra impacting that in a positive way and also thinking of new innovation to assist? Mm -hmm. Well, alarm fatigue is a double-edged sword. The ability to have real-time alerts and alarms, wonderful, powerful, can make a difference in care delivery. Uh, but be careful what you wish for. You could get an overload, hence the term alarm fatigue. And so it's not uncommon for hundreds of alerts or alarms to be distributed in very short periods of time. So what we're trying to do is play a role in helping in the management and the intelligent delivery of that. So for one aspect of that is interoperability between the mobile device and different types of information systems. So um, having the ability to communicate directly between the device and the medical equipment in the patient room, mm -hmm. IoT equipment, or having the ability to do that with the software. Uh, so. Uh, we have now the ability to have full range interoperability and wide uh, diversity and high volume. Uh, and so now we work with organizations such as your own that can play uh, a filtering and management process of alert and alarms. Mm -hmm. So i.e. you could have different alert and alarm types going to different personnel in the organization. Uh, there's a fine line between having the clinician uh, leave what they're doing, leave the task what they're doing if it's a true necessity or emergency and an annoyance of interrupting. So we want to filter out, we want to help filter out the non-critical activities. And so that can be done through um, software that can have rules engines that can direct some types of alert and alarms to one employee type and other types of alert and alarms to other employee types. So those are some examples of how we're working closely on the the engineer side and on the design side to have that, that coordination and interoperability with the software. So you're really taking more of an a ecosystem approach uh, and trying to be as open as possible to different software providers, whether that's Cerner or others in the industry. You're really looking at it from a broad perspective, if I'm hearing you correctly. And certainly there's a role of the software provider to do that. Are there specific things that you think are unique or you all could do unique beyond the software layer and the intelligence and the routing um, to change that? Uh, how you think about um, ringtones, how you think about different you know, flexibility in your platform to display that in a different way. Um, are, are there any envelopes we could be pushing there or, it, or is it more management and practice and implementation? It's a great question. It's thought-provoking, yeah. uh, and I think it's a little bit of all of the above. So on the one end, we have a lot of software engineers that manage and support the device to allow for a clean exchange between the alarm and the alert. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a big difference between the transmission and how it shows up on the mobile device. Uh, is it, uh, take the example of patient monitoring and vital signs. Through the Zebra device, you can have the vital sign uh, graphic uh, exactly the same as if you were in the patient room. And that doesn't come for free or for easy. That's, that's a lot of engineering software coordination. Mm -hmm. so, so one of our roles we're playing is to work 
in a proactive way with the right types of information and pre-certify and coordinate the exchange. We also do have the ability to uh, direct and adjust how information is coming in. Is it coming in through a, a noise, a sound? Is it coming in through visual? Uh, there's also the ability to triage what's coming in and put rules engines uh, in the sequencing or the partization of things. So uh, we're looking at a few different things there. Okay, great. Great. And the last question, kind of how, how are you thinking about, um, you know, the cloud, the impact of cloud in, in this environment, as well as how that will assist people in hospitals in, in advancing their goals? both from a communication standpoint, but also maybe how the cloud assist, uh, assists in that as well. So kind of two questions there, but mm -hmm. you know, how are you thinking of, about both of those areas? Yeah, John, I think the place to start is just to highlight uh, how clinical mobility is making a major mark in better patient care. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been some very impressive customer case studies and outcomes that have shown operational efficiency improvement uh, accelerating discharge time, accelerating room turn, uh, decreasing the amount of administrative work that mm -hmm. nurses need to use. So there's a lot of operational output or operational improvement that's happening. We're also seeing some great clinical enhancements. We're seeing improvement in compliancy rates with critical tasks. We're seeing automation of critical tasks that, that reduce the human error rate. Uh, and, and so what that translates into clinically is accurate tasks, safer uh, transmission of, of the work that's being done. Um, and then financially, there's some really strong things happening as well with some clinical mobility users, uh, which relate to helping on the revenue side, getting patient throughput better, uh, reducing uh, abandonment rate for patients who are walk-in patients, mm -hmm. uh, also reducing risk rates. So the momentum behind mobility in healthcare is really exciting. It's, it's just awesome. You're, you're seeing increasingly more and more hospitals that are marking very strong output improvements for that. Okay. And, okay. Um, and then cloud uh, is a boost. It's like uh, force multiplier to the capabilities of mobility. Uh, cloud uh, uh, more easily uh, helps with the uh, information flow. So now, not just looking at singular sources of information, but aggregation of lots of different types of information. Uh, being able to pull heavy duty analytics around the data. So perhaps you could look at the efficiency and utilization of a particular employee type as a peer group against their team members on the same floor, maybe in the same hospital, or perhaps in a community of many hospitals looking at nationally aggregated data. Um, cloud, uh, I think, is easier to manage information. It, it's the, it provides ease on, on security of data, which of course is so critical. So it's really exciting to see cloud take off, and I think that's going to uh, accelerate a lot of the value that mobility brings. Great. So, so it sounds like the power is really being able to integrate the communications along with whether it's the clinical workflow, clinical insights uh, that are unlocked and accelerated through um, cloud technologies and, and innovations. That's really where the magic comes in and that's where the differentiation comes in. And so whether it's throughput in hospital operations or it's, you know, we talk a lot about nursing when we talk about clinical communications, but also how does the, the, the provider and other the broader care team get involved in that? And what are the optimal workflows for each of those individuals uh, integrated tightly with the clinical communication? So another term you hear used in that is kind of patient-centered mm -hmm. um, clinical communication and collaboration. And so I think that's where for, for everyone, I think the patient-centered aspect, that can't be forgotten. So... You know. Absolutely great point. Yeah. Um, when you streamline workflows, you automate activities, and you unify disparate information sources, what, what we're really doing together is reducing the clutter for the caregiver, reducing the administrative tasks, freeing them up to be with the clinician, or with the patient rather. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the, they're with the patient, uh, the technology and the solution sets there to give them the information they need to stay with the patient. 
So it should begin and end with that patient-centeredness, and that's an, a very exciting part of, of this capability. Great. Well, appreciate you being here today, Chris. It, it's great. It's been a great collaboration and, and partnership between our two companies. So thanks for spending the time here today. Our pleasure. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome to Cerner's Live.